strikes of 1972 and 1994. Uh, I am not a big sports person, by the way, um, but I figured this would be something important to cover because uh, we talk a lot about labor movements, so we talk a lot about like teachers and manufacturing workers and like grit blue collar workers and white collar workers, and that's usually what we think about with labor. Uh, but you know, this is something a little bit different. This is slightly different than what what we would normally normally um, correlate with a strike of sorts, right? So, in 1972, uh, the the Major League Baseball Players Association, which had only been around for maybe six years, something like that, um, is is what I read, went on a 13-day strike, uh, particularly over their pensions. That's that's primarily what what they wanted. Now, the owners of the baseball teams um, did not expect the strike to happen, which is kind of on par, right? Like most of these stories, usually when this happens, the bosses, the managers, all these other fucking people are just like, we didn't even think. I mean. We took all their money and their rights and their humanity away from them. I mean, we didn't think anybody would have a problem with that to make us more rich. I mean, that's the price you got to pay. That's the price you got to pay to make me more rich. It's crazy. I can't even believe that this would happen. <laughs> Which, like, that's just how they react. They're just so surprised that people are standing up for their rights when you're stealing everything away from them. Uh, you know, like the 1877 railroad strikes, like they were literally like, we're going to cut people's pay and I bet you they'll be excited about it. People love being poor. People love it. It's their favorite thing in the world to struggle to find food, to struggle to make ends meet, to struggle to pay. They love it. It's like their favorite thing in the world to be poor. It gives them character. You know, we don't. The rich don't have character. The rich have uh, everything else. You know what you can't eat is uh, character. So, <laughs> so uh, the strike wasn't expected for a couple different reasons, and this reason was talked about with the Players Association. Um, they hadn't been paid for from from the previous year. They hadn't been paid from the 1971 season when this happened. Um, so they didn't have a strike fund. They didn't have any sort of like buffer pay or anything at that point. And, uh, and so it was a point of concern for, for a lot of the players. And they didn't really know if this was the right thing to do or not. Uh, eventually they decided, yeah, you know what? Unanimously they met up and they said, this is the right thing to do. This is what we need to do. So on April 1st, uh, 1972, they went on a 13 day strike, um, and eventually, after the thirteen, after thirteen days of no games, it was like fifty-eight games or something like that. Um, the 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 owners caved in and they negotiated for better pensions, and they got exactly what they wanted. They got what they were talking about, right? Now, this happened again in nineteen ninety-four, but but that the the nineteen ninety-four strike went on for a lot longer than just thirteen days. Right. The owners were not willing to to budge on what they wanted, which means that the capacity for greed had just increased in 22 years. That's really all that means. What the owners were saying because everything was up to be um, renegotiated at that point. Right. Everything was coming up for re renegotiation. So the owners were saying that they were going to cap salaries for the players. Of course, they're not going to cap salaries for anybody in the executive board. Um, they were also going to take a percentage from uh, licensing agreements uh, of, of players' likenesses, right? So they were literally uh, not just seizing the means of productions from these baseball players, but they were also seizing the means of the baseball players' face itself. They were, they were taking their face it's like the worst version of face off ever so so they went on strike for this in 1994 they were just like now nah, we're done um this is crazy you're th th we're, we're gonna see exponential pay cuts as as players and you guys are gonna get exponentially richer and we're not we're not even gonna get to be able to keep our own face you know and in this era of facebook you know 
uh, if if these baseball players would would make a a, a Facebook page, they I mean, the owners would have control over that. They they you know so. And what if one of them uh, wanted to change genders or something? If there's ownership of the face, the face is going to change too. That's good. That's a that's an even bigger problem that these owners didn't even consider. And again, the owners were like, we didn't even expect that they would go on strike for this stuff. They thought that enriching us would just be the best thing to do for everybody, you know, because because you know how everybody needs to worship me as, as though I am a god because I own a baseball team. So by the end of 1994, uh, fans were getting restless because they had to, like, pay attention to, you know, like the, the world and stuff. And it got so bad <laughs> that in 1994, President Clinton, Bill Clinton, you guys remember Bill, uh, Bill Clinton, they, he came out and made a press conference and said that this has gone on long enough uh, and, that, uh, and that the players and the owners need to sort their shit out. And I think that's fucking hilarious that when America's pastime goes on strike, the establishment freaks out because they're like, holy shit, they are not distracted anymore. Nobody is distracted. They're all paying attention to what we're doing. We need to we need to get them back. Let, let's just yell it. Just fucking get back out there and throw the fucking ball around so some, so some average suburbanite can get shit-faced before fighting with his neighbor over, you know, how close the tire tread on his car is leaning into his driveway that's what we need to do with america and and now they're now they're getting in the way of us telling gay people they can't work this is crazy because remember it's 1994 so that didn't really work um they bill clinton gave him a deadline to like february 95 and uh, and the, the date went and passed, and the, the owners of these teams were not ready to negotiate. They were not willing to talk to the players or any of this sort of stuff, right? So it just didn't work. And uh, so things were getting a little bit more desperate, and they finally took it to court. And the courts decided that the owners, by refusing to negotiate, by um, not... Uh, collectively bargaining with the players are the are responsible for the strike are the reasons why the strike is going uh and uh and so they had to come in and renegotiate the contracts which they did uh, but this had pretty pretty drastic effects on on the teams i think like the montreal expo w w who was like a winning team at that time uh had to leave montreal um, and really, it also had a, a major effect on fans because the, because there were a couple of fan there was there was a bunch of fans that particularly didn't like the fact that there was a strike happening. They didn't like the fact that uh, you know they they didn't get to get drunk on a weekday and uh, watch some people throw the ball around. You know, they didn't they didn't like the the fact that they didn't have a distraction and actually had to pay attention to to. The, 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 the articles of legislation that were going to determine their future. This trend of complacency has been going on in America for a very long time. Uh, people, lost, people lost faith in the game at that point, too. Um, and I don't, I, from, from, what I, from what I read, they, they haven't really um, been able to recover from it, which is kind of sad. Um, you know, but I mean, the players stood up for what they needed and, uh, and it sucks that the, that there was a, a, a portion of fans that didn't stick by the players. Um, and, and really, I mean, if you're a true fan of the game, if you're a true fan of, of baseball or, or any of these, any of the, like, even if this happened at the NBA, even if this happened at the, in hockey or whatever, I, I think if you're a true fan of the game, if you're a true fan of, of a team, then you should stick by your by the players, not the owners, because the because in that context, the players have more in co uh, common with you than the owners do. So it kind of sucks that the fans weren't, you know, kind of on their side. But I think the players did the right thing. I think the players should should continue to fight for, you know, things that they believe in, things that 
um, things that they know are right. Um, and, uh, I mean, again, it's like if baseball can do it, if baseball can, can, if these baseball players can go out and be like, yo, we need, uh, collective bargaining rights. We, we should be represented accurately. We should be compensated accurately. You can't take a, a major percentage of our likeness. You can't just take our face and put a dollar sign on it. That's our face. And and that's their right to do and they sh- and they damn well should and i think the i think fans if you're true fans you should support your players just like you should support striking workers uh you know if you're fans of like uh like groceries like if you're like a big fan of like groceries then you should support the whole food strikers you should support if 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 a uh, if if trader joe's employees decide to go on strike you should you should support them if you're a fan of uh, you, you know, fucking two-day shipping from Amazon to to get your chutchkeys or whatever the fuck, then you should be in solidarity with the Amazon striker. If you're a big fan of having your garbage picked up, you should stand in solidarity with sanitation workers when they ask for protective gear during a global pandemic. You shouldn't sit there and say, hazard pay, how dare they? Are you a fan of getting shit during the time when there's a global pandemic and a lot of people don't have work and are struggling to get by and there are people trying to do their job and help people out? Are you a fan of eating? Then you should support your your fucking working class people. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a like and a subscribe and a share. Share it out with your friends, your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy content like this. I'm going to be putting out videos like this every single day. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel uh, and make sure you hit that bell so you get all the alerts from all the videos that I put out there. Uh, and, uh, and if you, if you have the means to, uh, please consider making a a donation. I know we are all in tough times, but if you, if you can, uh, you can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can check out various different ways of becoming a sustaining member or just make a one-time donation. Uh, while you're on my website, you can also check out all of my past comedy albums, which are available on all of your favorite streaming and uh, downloading websites, if that's that's if that's a way that you can you say that, uh, <laughs> but they're also available on Bandcamp, which uh, right now is giving the most back to artists. Uh, but also on my Bandcamp, they are all available for a pay what you want. If you would like to enjoy some live stand-up comedy albums from me, and you don't have the means if you're in tough times that's totally fine you can download it for free go ahead and get it for free and enjoy it uh or if you do and if you want somebody else to enjoy it you can get it to them as a gift uh that's also a a recommended thing uh but most importantly thank you guys for tuning into this video um thank you guys for for all the people that have already donated that have already become patrons i really appreciate it you guys are amazing and uh until the next video we'll see you on the road thank you guys